Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. Here is my basically completed 5C tool holder for the corn. Really excited about how it came out. I did learn a couple of interesting lessons, so if you'll stay tuned for the next, say, 20 minutes or so, I'll bring you through the, the build of the final tuning stages and stamping the numbers and polishing the wheel up here. So thanks again, everybody. Appreciate all the comments and the enthusiasm. It's really fun to, to see what everybody has to say and to look, those of you that are building your own projects, I really enjoy looking at your channel. Um, the next thing for me will be the building the actual spindle for the corn. So that's gonna be quite a, quite a detailed undertaking. I'm really uh, probably gonna rely heavily on notes that Maddie from Maddie's workshop um, he did a wonderful, he did three videos in his, on his channel about building the, the corn. Actually, this, the spindle, probably actually four because he, he had a uh, lost footage video too. So, Maddie, thank you again for doing that. And thanks everybody. And please stay tuned and check out the making of the final parts of the uh, 5C tool holder. Thanks again. Hey guys, one more thing as I covered this in the uh, machining video. You want to have a uniform distance here, uniform thickness, and as I calculated, I needed 0 0.2, 2, 2.995 inches, and I just, I've spent about an hour tonight, I blew this whole thing, I used a, a one thou piece of brass trim stock that I have, and I, I basically, long story short, I used my height gauge, and I just finished adjusting things so that it's the uniform height all the way it just I found there was a spot that was maybe a thou higher or something like that on here which is not uncommon for when you're doing mill in the mill and the lathe so I found the the high spot I marked it with my uh, sharpie marker and I just set it in my vise over here and I used my file and here's my file card um, just file these things flat and let me show you that you can see the part that's filed. Years ago, when I was in college, I actually built a rifle, and part of that process was draw filing the barrel. It was an old timey uh, black powder rifle, it had an octagonal barrel. So I, I am experienced with using a file to remove draw, uh, mill marks, and you can see that there's still mill marks here on this part of it, but this part that was high. I've filed the mill marks away so anyway now I've got a uniform thickness of my part and I'm really pleased about that so I thought I'd show that just you know just something you might want to do if you have a height gauge and a um, stone like this a surface plate you can do this and and double check things so this will make make the tool that much more accurate when I get it all put together and I'm using it to sharpen end mills hey there welcome back to the metal mill 52 workshop I wanted to show I've did I've gone ahead and put some a stack of washers on here and it's probably not the final uh, size but I've cut and rounded the, the top of the bolt that I made a couple of segments ago and it locks up good so the other thing I should wanted to show the the filing of the front it came out really good I did a, a little bit more filing to the very front of the casting and I don't know if I can actually demonstrate this thing while it's in my lap but the here we go yeah right, can you tell the front is turning yeah so this is how it's supposed to work I believe the nut is on there it's secure and you can pull the the plunger out and then move the the whole thing moves together and there's no end play no wiggle in it so I'm really pleased with how that came out and the one thing that another I don't know, Dan didn't have this in his revised drawings, but I did have to mill a little notch on the back side here of the plunger to clear the nut. So you may have to do that. It was no big deal. I just marked it out and milled it a couple weeks ago when I made that thing. The next thing I'm getting ready to do now that I've got the fitting done um, is to mark out and stamp the number stamps and I think I'm going to do it the book calls for or not the book but the the drawings that you get from the uh, the internet from the corn groups 
they call for marking out using this this method 0 15 30 45 30 15 0 again and do it like in quadrants so as you can see that's what I've got marked out here with a sharpie and I oriented it so the knob is at the top and I figure this will be the zero point when I get ready to align everything I'll be putting a scribe mark there to match the zero I haven't done that yet obviously because the whole machine's not done but I thought this was good enough to mark out where I'm going to put the different numbers. So today, the rest of the day, then I've got some of this stuff done. I'm going to practice with my number stamp. I bought some 1 16th of an inch stamps, and I may use those. The ones I used on the other index wheel, index plate, were 3 32nd of an inch. So, and they were actually kind of large, believe it or not, as small as that sounds. So I'm thinking about trying the 1 16th on this. I may go with the 332nd, I'm not quite sure. But overall, that's the little update there. Really pleased how this goes. So the next steps, all i got to do is stamp the numbers and kind of buff this all out. And this will be essentially ready. The, ne the next thing we'll do will be the, the quote-unquote paint and body work. Just filing and smoothing, grinding the casting down and getting ready to paint it. But as you can probably tell, i got the space heater on out here. It's cold here and uh, I'll be waiting a while um, before I work on that the, the paint. It, so I have plenty of time to, to do the spindle and speaking of that I wanted to show the spindle bearings and some of the wheels that came with this. I'll do that in a segment in just a minute. Okay I also wanted to show the cup wheels. I was talking to or trading email messages with Dan on from the corngroup.io about the various wheels and where to buy them and so forth and I do have some diamond cup wheels that I used on my mini tinker but this is the set of wheels that came with the corn castings and you know I keep talking about the gentleman from the Chicago area that bought them and his son sold them to me Mr. Bear up there in Chicago look at this that the paper the newspaper that these wheels were wrapped in it's the Sheffield Star, Saturday, March 6, 1976. So very cool. These things are the, the real deal, a genuine article. Looks like they're all 80 grit. And um, there's a couple of, well, a large flat wheel, a huge cup wheel here, and a little dish wheel, and there's a little cup wheel here that came with it. Some of the paper came off of it. So, anyway, really excited to have those things. I'll have to make arbors for these when I make the spindle. Speaking of the spindle, I keep these, don't worry, I don't keep these things normally anywhere near the grinding wheels, but these are the actual bearings, the little magneto type bearings or that came with the, the kit from Model Engineering Services. So hopefully you can read. The bearings are made in England. Look, it says EN13, I think. I don't know if that says, I guess it says RHP. Now that I look at it under the camera. So, <clears throat> very cool to have the original bearings. And they come apart, just like it says in the book. The inner race and outer race comes apart. So I'll be able to use the outer races, sorry, to test fit inside the spindle when I get ready to make it. So I will clean this all off when I... Put, it, put that back together and um, anyway pretty cool beans here Dan I appreciate all the interesting advice and uh, I will keep you all posted as I make progress yeah, before I get started stamping the numbers in I wanted to show my setup decided to take advantage of the support since this is an aluminum index wheel I didn't want to just bang, have it sitting in a vise and just bang on it and because it'll it'll deform it, I'm sure. I'm hitting it with a hammer and stamping tool. So what I did was I, I took the 5C collet hole holder, put it, put a 5C collet in there, and I have a piece of 7 8 inch stainless or not stainless but drill rod. So I've got that in there as central support. I've got everything clamped up tight, fairly tight. I can still spin the uh, index wheel so my thought is I've got the zero in there now 
and my thought is to go ahead and mark all the zeros first and then I'll have a line of reference that I can use for the remaining. It'll be nice that the, the fact of the matter is it's only two digits. It'd be a lot easier to, to make the marks. And yesterday I mentioned I had bought a set of 1 16th inch stamping tools and I tried them out yesterday. The one, obviously the ones on the left are the 1 16th inch ones on the right are the 332nd. I decided I'm going to go ahead and use the 332nd tools here. And um, I, I do think the 1 16th inch ones will come in very handy. because, And this is a piece of aluminum, same material that I made the index wheel out of. I think the, the 1 16th will come in very handy for the thimble on the, on the base. I still haven't marked that yet. But that's my setup. I think I'm going to go ahead and mark all the zeros first. And then start marking the other intermediate measurements. I'll bring you back as I make some progress. Hey everybody, people seem to be interested in watching me actually perform some of these functions. So um, what I've got, I've gone and marked all of the individual pairs except for the 4 and the 5, so the 45 degree marks. And I'll just show you, I've showed this before, let's see I finished one and just show you my process. Having the um, universal pillar tool is really really helpful because it gives you a chance to line things up I like to line things up by eye I'm lining up the first digit of the two digit pairs this way by eye and it's of course it's held in a vise so it's pretty straightforward pretty easy and then of course you want to get the mark place to be right at the top of the the middle of the part if you will so now I've got it all set, set up with the four in there, and I'll give it a strike. And that's all it takes for the soft aluminum. So that's my four. Put my five in, slip it down. And what I like to do, I move it over and I twist the part, twist the, I move, rotate the part just a little bit, and I twist the the uh, stamping tool in the in the pillar tool, so that my second mark is or second number stamp is still lined up as good as I can get it by eye. So here's the five. And you can see the tool itself moves a little bit. It bounces when you hit. So every time you strike you have to realign a little bit. So here's the 45 I just marked. If you can see that let me bring you over here. Hopefully you can see that. And this that should look pretty good when it gets all cleaned up. So and go ahead, the 45s are just a few more to go, and I'll be all done. I'll keep the camera running just in case people are interested. If not, I guess you can fast forward through. I appreciate it. Somebody wrote a comment that they liked the, uh, the format and the content, and that, you know, if they got bored, they could fast forward through, and I agree with you. Okay, so here's the four. Double check. Yep, that's the five there. It's all lined up, held steady. Smack four out, the five in, move it over, and twist, realign, there we go. You get one chance at doing these, so you must well take a little bit of time. thought about marking all the first digits for all of them all at once, and that would be a little bit much. Okay, there's another 45. I am glad that I marked out where these things need to be yesterday, so I got a feel for what needed to happen. I just realized I missed a 30 there. So there's a 4. I'll have to come back and get that. Huh. 5. Move it over, twist it, rotate it. Feels like the right spot. Smack it. Okay. I think that's everybody. 30, 15, 0, 15, 30, 45, 30, 15, 0, 15, 30, 45, and there's the 30 where I missed, so put my tools back. 
or might as well talk about this while I can. You can see that I had to sand and file these down a little bit. It's a good set. It's the um, Made in USA Young Brothers hand cut stamps, which were not cheap. I think I got them from a vendor off of eBay. But the one weird part was that black coating, it was very thick on the outside and it prohibited smooth movement in the little pillar tool spring-loaded holder. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and look at my pillar tool build. This I'll show you in a second since I brought it up. All right, let me line that up. Okay. There's the three. Smack it. Ooh. It's not a direct hit, but it made a good mark, it looks like. And the zero. Move it over, twist it, rotate it. Okay, and a tap. Here's the spring-loaded holder. I covered the making of this in the Pillar Tool series, but it's pretty neat. There's little ball bearings underneath these pieces of spring steel, and they keep it loaded up tight. It's all pinned together. You mill a slot and then pin it together. But it works a treat, as the Brits say. All right, so let's go around, double check the work before we put the tools away. 0, 15, 30, 45, 30, 15, 0, 15, 30, 45, 30, 15, 0, 15, 30, 45, 30, 15, 0. All right, looks like I got everything. Boy, that's not a perfect one. All right, I'll take it out and buff it up, and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. Okay, I know it's hard to believe with just the uh, with the magic of video that you can start and stop. But look at this finish. This is that. This is what I was talking about earlier. This Mother's Mag polish that the hot rodders use. Just I've had this tin forever. It looks terrible inside there, but you just rag it on like you would like a car polish. I ragged it on with that rag and ragged it off with this rag. And look how fantastic that aluminum looks. Absolutely beautiful came out great let me show you one thing I noticed one of my four my 45 marks was not great so I went and remarked it this is why you don't restamp things I don't know if you guys can see that or not but let me just show you I screwed that up dang it I put the four sometimes you can do it I put the four back I thought I had it you know you feel like it felt like it was in the the spot of the old one and I smacked it again and I made a double shadow 45 there so I hate that, um, but anyway, I'm very pleased with the way this thing came out overall. Absolutely beautiful, and if you notice, I put my numbers this way, because I figured this is the way I'm going to read it. Put the, the tool holder, like I mean, it's like that. I'm going to be reading them like this as I'm using it, so that's why it's oriented that way. You could orient them in any way, which, any, which way that you would prefer, but that's why I do mine that way. So... Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm, I'll be cleaning this up, playing, you know, clean up and reassemble, and um, I'll post. I think this is this is the end here. I'll, I'm going to wrap all these little finishing touch um, video segments together and put them together into uh, one final email, not email, one final uh, video that I can upload today. So thanks again for watching, everybody. Uh, stay tuned. The spindle comes next.